If you're building a brand new house or doing a whole house remodel like you see me do often on the build show, there's a lot you can do to ensure that your house is gonna be very energy efficient and also have a cleaner, healthier indoor air. But what if you're an existing house? What if you're in a house and you just don't have the budget, don't have the means or the ability to do a big remodel or to build a new house? That's what today's build show is about. We're gonna talk about what you could do to an existing home for $1,000, $5,000, or $10,000 that would really make a significant difference in healthy indoor air and energy efficiency. Today's build show, all about upgrades. Let's get going. Okay, so if you're watching this, you own your house and your house is maybe five to 10 years old or older, what can you do that would really make a dramatic and significant difference in your indoor air quality, in your healthy air quality, in your energy efficiency for that house? And what can you do in a couple of increments of dollars? First off, let's start with $1,000. If you've got $1,000 to spend, I think the best way to spend that money is to do an energy audit. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can get an energy audit. And if you just Google energy audit in your area, you're gonna find that there's people that will do them for free, right? And it's usually the local HVAC company that wants to come out and give you an energy audit. But what you really want is someone who's a certified rater. There's really two bodies that I trust, ResNet, and BPI. I'll put a link in the description, but these are two really good um, training bodies that certify raters. And you want somebody who's been certified with one of those two. Now they actually have uh, a find a professional link on both those pages. So look in the description for that. And that's gonna vary in cost. It may be a few hundred dollars. If you have a big house, it may be a few thousand dollars. But for the most part, you can do this for under a thousand dollars. And when they come out, one thing that you also want them to do is to do a blower door test if possible. That may cost a little bit more, but that's really gonna give you a good understanding of where you're using your energy, how your house is performing, and how you can upgrade it. And you may not be able to do all those upgrades immediately, but in the future. Now, what I like about this is this is an independent person that doesn't have a dog in the hunt. If you get a, a window sales company to come out and give you an energy audit, Lo and behold, they're gonna tell you that no matter what your windows are, they probably need to be upgraded and look at this amazing savings you can gain. No, you don't want that. You want, a, you want an independent person. Spend that money. What if you're not interested in that? You just want healthier air. There's a couple things that I would do. The best thing to do for under a thousand bucks if indoor air quality is important to you, which it certainly is right now, is to install a four inch pleated media air filter in your HVAC system. Those little one inch filters, they don't do very much. And, and having a higher filter doesn't really necessarily mean you're getting better filtration. They just don't seat well. You get a lot of air that bypasses those and they clog quickly, they're just not great. What you want is a real thick pleated media filter. They can vary in cost, but the least cost model that I use all the time is an April Air model. They make them in MERV 11 and MERV 13. MERV is how all the air filters are rated. It's minimum efficiency reporting value. You want a minimum 11 in your house, 13 is really better. That's really what I put in all my houses, regardless of whether people tell me they're allergy sufferers or they have asthma or whatever. MERV 13 is a really good standard. Not quite to HEPA quality, but very, very good filtration. Those are gonna run you a few hundred bucks plus install, so for under a thousand bucks, you should be able to get one of those installed. What if you're not interested in getting that invasive? Could you use a standalone one? You could, I probably needed a whole, to do a whole video on those because most of the ones you're gonna spend 100 or two or 300 bucks on, they're really not worth the money. You gotta spend more to get a good one. And that's why I'm gonna put this in my $1,000 or under category. IQ Air makes a really nice one. It's a beast. It's kind of a model that's about this tall, big box, really good filtration though. The guys at Field Controls makes a, make a really nice one. That's, that's actually what I have at my house. April Air makes a nice one, but you need a big unit that uses a lot of CFM. It's really moving a lot of air. And you typically wanna place that near your return if possible in your house, if you just have one, or in your bedroom where you're spending the most time at night. Now remember though, 
on high is where it's getting the best filtration and the most airflow, sometimes not the easiest to sleep with. So that's why I'm saying put it in your HVAC system. That's the best place to spend that thousand bucks. Okay, last thing in the thousand dollar category. If you're in the South, like me, a plug-in dehumidifier. You can get them for two, three hundred bucks at your local home center. I'll link to a model you can get even on Amazon. If you have a relatively uh, uh, small house like I do, under 2,500 square feet, one of the 70 pint models will probably do your whole house. Having a lower humidity in your house is gonna make a big difference in your air quality. It's gonna lower mold and, and uh, allergens from reacting in your house, and it's just gonna feel really good. So those are all options for under a thousand bucks. Okay, next, 5,000 bucks. What can you do for $5,000? Now, the best thing you can probably do at $5,000 is to take that energy report that you spent a thousand bucks on and implement that. Go watch my video called Insulation 2.0. This is a video that's focused on air sealing first and then insulation. Most houses in America at the ceiling level have insulation right above the ceiling and the attic space is an unconditioned space. And if you have ductwork up there, that ductwork can be leaky. The connection between your house and that attic can be very air leaky. So we need to seal those things up and having a professional come out and do that can make a big, big difference. I'm gonna call that insulation 2.0. You're probably gonna spend every bit of 5,000 bucks on that and it's gonna make a big difference in the long run because we're not just re-insulating or adding insulation, we're air sealing first and then we're insulating and that's gonna make a difference. The other thing that $5,000 might give you is the ability to seal your ductwork if you have ducts out of your condition space. Now this isn't so applicable if you're in the north. If you're in uh, you know, Minnesota or Canada watching this, you probably don't have any ductwork that's not in your basement or in your air conditioned or heated space in your house. But if you're in the south watching this, you very well likely have ducts in your crawl space, which is a nasty area, and you probably have ducts in your hot attic, also a nasty area. By air sealing your ducts, this can make a huge difference. Now there's one kind of national brand that I like called AeroSeal. I'll put a link in the description of those guys. That's a trained network of contractors that have this proprietary system that will basically uh, send out an aerosolized caulk into your ductwork system while it's under pressure and seal up all those uh, small cracks and leaks in your system. You could also have uh, so an independent person perform a duct blaster test and find out how leaky your ducts are. Most houses in America, from the data I've seen, have air leakage from 15 to 25% in their ducts. And again, if those ducts are outside of the condition space in attics and crawl spaces, that's really not good. That means we're losing money that we spent on air conditioning or heating and we're also potentially sucking stuff back in, which is really not good. We definitely don't want crawl space or attic air being sucked back into our houses. At the $5,000 level, the other things that we can do to our HVAC system are adding a dedicated dehume. If you're in the South, I highly recommend this. Every new house that I build or remodel, we put a dedicated dehumidifier in those houses today. And the other thing you can do is upgrade to even better air filtration systems. IQ Air makes a MERV 16 system. It's a huge box with great filtration. The guys at April Air make some MERV 16 systems. There's a lot of things you can do like train clean effects that you can really add some great filtration to your HVAC system if you've got a few more dollars to spend. All right, now what if you have $10,000 to spend? What would you do to your house? Now this is a category where you can make a really significant difference. Now remember I talked about duct sealing with Aero Seal? Their sister company, Aero Barrier, makes a product that I've talked about before for houses under construction that you actually could use in a retrofit, meaning a house that's new to you. You bought this new house, you're about to move in, the house is empty, you could do Aero Barrier there. Now, if you're not familiar, here's the quickie on it. It's a, a system where you put the house under pressure, you put a blower door in, you blow air in, and they've got all these nozzles that will aerosolize this caulking in the air. It's floating around. When the house is under a blower door, under pressure, as if we're blowing up a balloon, you've got all these pinholes of air leaks around the house. 
that caulking is going to start flying out those little pinholes everywhere. And these little particles, as they come out, these leaks, they're going to start to glom together. And over time, they'll actually form a full bead of caulking, so to speak. And all those cracks and crevices, places where air is leaking out of the house. And you can take a house that's pretty darn leaky and make it incredibly tight. Now again, normally I'm gonna do this under construction just before or right after the drywall phase, but you can do it in a resale house as well, as long as the house is empty. It's gonna cost a little more because we're gonna have to cover all the finished surfaces, all the flat surfaces in the house, but it's an incredible system and it's gonna be a little more expensive to do it then. But really, this will make a big difference. We do not want air leaking into our houses, both from an energy efficiency standpoint and from an indoor air quality perspective. This is gonna make a big difference. Okay, now assuming you've already done insulation 2.0, the next thing you could do is actually consider replacing your HVAC system and maybe even replacing your duct work. Now this is a big deal and this, this can vary of course in cost, but when you put a new HVAC system and a new ductwork, that can make a big difference. When I remodeled my house about 15 years ago, I had original 70s ductwork, which was in terrible condition. It had all kinds of garbage in it. And by ripping that out and bringing new ductwork in and a new furnace, I put a real basic system in. I didn't do some top of the line system, but I did do new ductwork and good filtration. And that's what you could spend $10,000 on and potentially make a big difference on your house. You could even potentially, if you had some hot spots or some cold spots in your house, transfer a standard system to a mini split system. Now I'm doing this at my current build under construction where I've got two areas. They're gonna be heated and cooled with a mini split head. Now there's options for these. We could have a wall mount system, which you're traditionally seeing as we think about mini splits. That's a cassette on the wall that provides both heating and cooling. Oftentimes there's just one free online and one outdoor unit. And that is gonna provide all the heating and cooling necessary for that particular area of your house without any duct work. It's a really nice upgrade. The other thing that you can do with a mini split is actually a ceiling cassette or a radiator style unit as well. I really like the Mitsubishi brand, but there's other brands out there in the marketplace as well, like Daikin or LG that make this equipment as well. You wanna look for a dealer that's used to using that equipment in your area. That can be a really nice upgrade for a couple thousand dollars, let's say in a bonus room that's always hot above a garage, or maybe a master bedroom that you wanna cool down when the rest of the house is, is gonna remain hot. Maybe even a garage space. I'm doing a, a home workshop in my garage and I'm putting a mini split in there. My garage is gonna be uh, fully insulated and air sealed to the best of my ability. When I'm working out there for a couple hours, I want a little bit of space conditioning. That one-to-one -one mini split head is gonna do a great job for me. Guys, hopefully you learned something in this space. Don't be intimidated by this. You know, you can spend more than this, but for a thousand, five thousand, or ten thousand bucks, I think this is some really good advice. Comment below if, if I missed anything, if there's something you think that I missed when it comes to these increments and what you might do to your house. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, new content six days a week over on buildshownetwork.com. I've got four other builders and an architect shooting videos on my Build Show Network, their version of the Build Show over there. I'll put a link in the description to sign up for our newsletter that we send every Friday. You'll get an email from me saying what's new on that website. Guys, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.